Welcome to this week's GCN Tech Clinic, where I try and solve and answer your bike related problems. So if you've got something which is plaguing you, just let me know down there in the comment section below, or alternatively on all forms of social media using the hashtag AskGCNTech. As ever, with no further ado, let's crack on. First one this week comes in from trying to swim, cycle and run. All sounds to me like a triathlete, possibly. Uh, hi, I would love to know more about how to run multiple wheel sets, specifically a training set and a race set. What is the best way to do this? Is it to have a cassette on each rear wheel or just move the cassette over? Do you need to redo your gears or adjust the disc brakes if you swap them over? Or is it quite straightforward? Are there any other considerations? Thanks. Oh, right. Ideally, you're gonna to need to have two different cassettes, one on your training wheels, one on your race wheels. That way, it's gonna be way quicker to change them around and everything like that. And also, you're gonna get more life out of both components because you're not gonna be using them at all times. So for your training wheels, you can get entry-level cassette as long as it's the same speed variant, that's gonna be absolutely fine. Don't worry about weight, nothing like that, because a little bit of extra weight for training will do the world of good when it comes to racing. As for adjusting your gears, probably not. Uh, these days, you say they're about disc brakes and everything, so the, uh, I suppose the virtual overlock nut distance of your axle is gonna be practically identical, if not identical, to literally you know, a hundredth of a millimeter, just the way in which manufacturing is done these days, as opposed to uh, an old school uh, axle with threads on it that your cones would have gone onto. You could manipulate that yourself. With cartridge bearing wheels, you can't manipulate that. So you're all good there. Um, you also mentioned though, regarding the disc brake performance and everything, is that gonna be affected? Yeah, that's something to consider on there. Um, the reason being that unless you have got exactly the same hubs on your race wheels and training wheels, there's likely to be a very slight variant and also the rotors could wear out too. So you probably, the best thing to do is when you remove your, your one pair of wheels before you put the other ones in, actually get yourself a thin tire lever, something like that, and just push it and push those pads back into place inside of the actual caliper, and then put the wheel in, pump the brake a few times, and it should align them okay. Sometimes you get a little bit of rubbing, even after doing all of that, and in that case, you can get very, very thin washers uh, if you're using six bolt as well as a center lock too, and that could just move the rotor one way or another, and hopefully try and solve those problems. But yeah, ideally, listen to that advice and you should be okay. Next up, we've got Chad Salazar. Chad says, hello, bike tech gods. Uh, is it possible to remove and replace a Holotech two bottom bracket without a specific BB tool? DIY maybe, thanks. Yeah, right, but you'd be doing a really, really bad job doing this. Firstly, you're gonna need to somehow try and remove the uh, crank arm insulation, a uh, little bolt as well, the plastic one, or metal on some of the older versions of Dura-Ace. Uh, trying to get that out, DIY it, is gonna be a bit of a struggle, I would I would guess, unless you get a peg spanner and expand it and use it and sort of hack or bodge it. But as you have asked about the removing or installing Holotech two bottom bracket without the special tool. Yeah, you could, right? You could wrap the bottom bracket cups in a in an old inner tube, an old tire, something like that, and get a big old bench vise, place it um, horizontally, so you have the cup inside of the vise jaws, clamp it up really tight, rendering the bottom bracket useless because you're gonna be crushing it almost, and then using the frame as like a lever to turn it off of the vise and you could do the reverse for insulation, but you're for the sake of, I don't know, 10 pounds, which is what a uh, bottom bracket tool would cost roughly, you know, maybe 15 pounds, I would go ahead and do that. See a tool as an investment, if you like. This reminds me of uh, when I was about 17, a lad had bought a bike um, and brought it in for a service because he had destroyed it by basically trying to do all sorts of things without the proper tools. So he had a, an old um, cartridge bottom bracket, the sort of thing, which used a tool like this. So you can see here all these splines, internal splines, as opposed to Holotech 2, the external uh, cutouts and splines. So anyway, he tried to remove a bottom bracket. I don't know what with, it must have been a screwdriver. The lad also did loads of other things because he didn't have the right tools. Um, and I just remember the famous words, oh no, oh no, and his dad looking at him going, oh yes, oh yes. And it was uh, very awkward. So basically, uh, Chad, 
get the right tool for this one. That's the moral of the story, otherwise you're gonna end up damaging more than it's worth. Next up is Konstantin Marikov, who says, Hi John, I have a Canyon Ultimate CF SL 9.0 with an Acros AI 70 fiber headset. I want a low stroke zero stack headset. Which one will work? Thanks. Right, okay, so uh, just to refresh people on this bike, how it works is it doesn't have a standard expander plug inside of the fork steerer. Instead, you put just a, a bung in there, but it doesn't have any bolts or anything, it's just kind of like a reinforcement. Um, lower bearing assembly on these bikes have angular contact bearings. The top one though, the upper one, just has normal uh, standard cartridge bearing in there. So. On top of that, you put this uh, Acros uh, AI-70 cover, and inside of that, you've got a little grub screw. On top of that, you put your stem, and you tighten up those bolts, right, so it's in place, nice and, nice and tight. Um, to adjust the actual headset bearing preload, you tighten this very small little grub screw that I've already mentioned. It's probably like a T5 or T6 uh, head on it. It's absolutely minuscule. And what that does, that pushes against the, uh, the upper bearing assembly and also the bottom of your stem. And in turn, obviously, it creates all of the pressure or it reduces the pressure, whichever way you want to look at it, of the headset bearing assembly and their, their preload. Um, and what it's doing is it's expanding against the stem when you tighten up that little bolt, only a very small amount. And that means you don't have to have the expander plug in there like you would do on a standard fork. So. Yeah, you could take off that special top cap you've got, try and find one to fit on there, I think it's an inch and a quarter on that bike, put the stem on, put the expander plug in, and then preload those bearings as you would do on a standard A headset setup. Uh, just make sure, of course, you can get all those parts in the size, which like I've already said, I'm pretty sure is inch and a quarter, and you should be okay there. Next up, we've got Harry McDade, who says, Hi John, great show. I was out on a ride when a chain link broke and got caught in my rear derailleur. Uh, the derailleur is fine, but I bent the hanger. Is it possible to bend it back well enough to still get good gear shifting, or am I better off replacing it? Thanks, Harry. Right, nice question here, Harry. Um, yeah, you could bend it back, but the problem is you've already got a weak joint now or a weak part of that hanger. Most gear hangers, when they come on bikes, tend to be made from cast aluminium, uh, and they actually flex a little bit anyway, so you're gonna have even more flex in there, because obviously you do have that weak spot. So I'd go out and buy yourself a new one. When you install it, or you get the shop to install it, get yourself a derailleur alignment gauge, or find someone who has, and make sure that that mech hanger is nice and straight, because even the really beautiful CNC machined ones, which I would advise, because they offer just slightly uh, improved shifting, because they're stiffer in their, in their material, and they're slightly bulkier too, just check really that it's all in line, because even those brand new ones, like I've said, can sometimes not be a-okay. Right, next up, we've got old guy on a bike, uh, who says, hello from New York. Oh, I've never been to New York. I wouldn't mind going though. Uh, I'd like to try an Ultegra cassette combination Shimano don't offer, 12 to 28. How inviolable or inviolable are Shimano's ramps and timings, i.e. can I mount the 12, 13 and 16 tooth cogs specified for their 12, 25 cassette with the 14 to 28 tooth cogs of their 11 to 28 cassette? Thank you. This is a sort of question I absolutely love because yeah, it's absolutely fine. Uh, like I said, you're already using the correct speed cassettes. If you're trying to put a 10 speed sprocket into an 11 speed cassette, it wouldn't work very well. Uh, you're gonna have all sorts of compatibility issues with the spacings because as we put more sprockets onto a free hub, the tolerances become closer and closer and everything has to be exactly spot on. Uh, yeah, the shifting ramps and everything that come on those sprockets, they should fit nice and well on there too. A mate of mine, his son did this on a cross bike to get the perfect ratios too, so I know it is possible. Uh, he didn't you know, do exactly what you wanna do with 12, 28, but he did mix and match a few different Shimano cassettes just to get it spot on for his desired cadence for when the going got tough. Right, penultimate one now, Rich Antonio. I'm building a new S-Works tarmac frame, 11 speed mechanical rim brake, and would like to know if I can use a Jura Ace crank set with everything else being SRAM red, uh, both derailleurs, cassette, shifters, and chain. Thanks. Yeah, uh, it will be fine. Uh, now, the brands say it will not work ideal, and it won't be quite as crisp shifting as if everything was from the same brand and exactly the same group set, but, it will be okay. I've done it, my mates have done it. 
Um, and I like what you're doing here because you want to have something different on your bike to the norm, if you like. And I think part of, part of being a cyclist and being involved in tech and everything is about having things which you want to have on your bike. Sometimes it just simply doesn't work, but in your case, it will work. Right, final question then this week comes in from Ben Body, who says, I have a winter stroke turbo bike equipped with Shimano Claris and a nicer summer bike equipped with uh, 105 5800. I'm considering getting a power meter, but can't afford or justify buying a pedal base system, which would be easy to transfer between bikes. Would a stages or four eye crank base power meter be transferable between the two group sets? I know that transferring these is not ideal, but I'm willing to live with the awkwardness to save some money. Thanks in advance. Yeah, I like to save a bit of money too. And Ben, the good news is for you, my friend, it's gonna be absolutely fine. Both of those group sets, the Claris and the 105 5800, both use Shimano Holotech 2 systems. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, the Q factor across the whole range on the roadside doesn't change. Uh, at least not that I've been able to measure. All right, I hope I've been able to help answer or solve your bike related tech problem. If not, well, you know the drill by now. And if not, leave me a comment or question down there below and I'll do my very best to help answer it in an upcoming episode. Remember as well to like and share this video with your friends and to subscribe to the GCN Tech channel. Don't forget, click the notification icon so you get alerted each and every time we put a video live. And why not check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got loads for everyone. And uh, yeah, Christmas is coming too. Now for two more great videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here.